Hey, y'all. Happy. It's today, Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. It's raining in Dallas. It's all gloomy and yucky out there and sticky. I've done, <laughs> I've done my hair twice. This is the best I can do, y'all. It's just not working with me. Well, how's it going where y'all are at? What kind of weather y'all having today? So, I brought y'all three paintings to show y'all today before we get into story time, which is going to be a story that picks up where I left off, where we had run away from Casa. We're going to pick up that story today. But I brought y'all three paintings to show you today. And this first one is like children's art, like for a children's room. It's a big mama elephant and her baby. And I think with the colors, it could go in pretty much any little children's room. And it would be so happy to wake up and see this smiley little face looking at you. That's just my opinion, you know. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness and oh my gosh. Technical difficulties. Okay. Sorry, y'all. I dropped this tripod so sensitive. You just barely touch it. The phone goes flying. Okay, so this is one that I did like. I like a lot of the old school stuff and, you know, like the old school gas stations and old school trucks and stuff like that. So I did a series. I was going to do a series and then I sold um, part of it. So I just, you know, cut the series off. But, um, here is the beginning. It's a, a gas station. And, you know, back in the day, they had everything. All the food and sodas and stuff you needed for the farm. I'll try to get close up here. See, there's a delivery coming. There's apples. And melons and there's some puppies and some chickens see the chicken and there's a kitty on the car and then it's got a truckload of pumpkins in there and then if you look, let's see over here, I'll take you into the store there so you can see some of the signs. And then you'll see in the back, see the farm with the cows. And there's a kitty on the fence. There's all kinds of neat little good stuff in this one. It's one of my favorites. And then this next one is also like, um, m maybe not just children's, but like a young adult or preteen or something. I thought this would be gorgeous for like a girl's bedroom. It's a horse running through the water. And a butterfly. There's lots of little sparklies on this. It's a happy horse with gorgeous hair. I wish my hair was like that. There you go, y'all. 
y'all got to see something pretty. Well, let me put one behind me, so maybe you'll be able to see that. There we go. Okay. Story time. So, hold please. Okay, so, now keep in mind when I tell this story, this is not me as an adult now. This is me in my uh, 16, yeah, this is me in my 16-year-old body and mind. Now, when we were on the way, um, and we, we were in Florida, and we were on our way to West Palm Beach, we started picking up newspapers so we could look for jobs, try to get a job before we got there. And I saw these ads and they kept looking for dancers. Now, y'all, I swear to you, this is how naive I was. They were looking for dancers and I was like, well, I can dance. <laughs> oh my gosh. So anyway... We finally got to West Palm Beach, and he um, he did the construction with his uncle. We were there. Um, we were staying in his sister's house, and we had our own little bedroom. We slept on a, a mattress on the floor, and it was hot, y'all. It was one of those old, you know, wooden houses with no air conditioning. Ooh, we just used to bake and we just would wake up soaking wet, you know. Just, we're just, oh, so hot all the time. But um, it seemed like we were doing okay. The family seemed to be accepting. They were kind of um, stand out in the driveway and drink beer after work kind of people. And so, um, you know, we used to hang out and, you know, drink beer with them and everybody seemed to be chill. It seemed like it was going to be okay. And his, um, the girl that, that we were living with, his I don't know if that was his aunt or if it was his uncle and that was his wife, but um, she was a waitress and she drove like this little Volkswagen bug and she would take me for rides in the car and I would ask her all kinds of questions. What do you do? You know, because she was, um, I don't know, maybe 25 or something at the time. So I wanted to pick her brain and like find out, you know, what do adults do around here? How am I going to blend in? Because I had to pretend I was an adult. I mean, otherwise they're going to throw me in jail. Somebody's going to pick me up. And I didn't know if they were looking for me. So I wanted to do whatever I could, you know, under the table, so to speak. I was not trying to get caught. And so um, I thought, well, she waitresses, so. And she makes pretty good money, so. I mean, I probably could do that. The only thing I had done at that point was work at fast foods and handle the registers. And yeah, it was like fast foods. And I worked at a place called Fresher Cooker, which is not technically a fast food where we made salads and sprouts and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, let's see. So I wasn't working. He was working. And of course, you know, all we really needed money for at that particular time was like food and deodorant and stuff like that. I really, honest to God, can't remember how long it was, but it wasn't that long. It was either like two weeks or a month and a phone call came in and they were looking for us and yeah, the lady went into like a panic and didn't want to be like hiding runaways or something. And so they told us we were going to have to go. And so, um, we didn't know what to do. So, um, we took off for Fort Lauderdale 
I think he told him that, you know, there would be some work down there for him. So off we went, you know, we hitchhiked everywhere, you know, <laughs> you really can't do it today. But back then, you know, you could, if you were careful and, you know, prepared to handle whatever might come your way. Um, certainly you couldn't just jump in a car and just pretend it's going to be okay. Like you needed to have street smarts, so to speak. But so we hitchhiked, um, we actually met a nice couple on the way to Fort Lauderdale and we stayed at their house for one night. We ate dinner. They had Dobermans. I remember that. And, um, they took us back to the highway or some, some way they, you know, put us in a good spot to get to where we needed to go. And that was sweet. And then, um, I mean, I look back on it now and I'm like, would I pick up a couple of teenagers and bring them home with me? Well, like, you know, it's today, so you can't really answer the question. Maybe back then I would have if I was an adult back then, but it just, you know, it seems like they were like hidden blessings or, you know, somebody was watching out for us. So... <sighs> We made it to Fort Lauderdale and got a hotel, and we only had enough money for, I don't know, maybe three nights. And this was at a time when, you know, it's not like it was, it's, it's not like it is today where hotels are so expensive, and especially in Florida, and especially around the areas that we were at, you could always find some kind of an inn or like somewhere cheaper to stay than the fancy chain motel, you know, you could get, you could get in somewhere for really inexpensive. So I went back to those ads in the paper, back to those dancing ads. And I remember that he took me, uh, my first night, you know, I don't remember if we, you know, we didn't have a car, so we, either walked or um, took a taxi, but I don't know if we could afford taxis yet. Um, but I know that he had found work, but I didn't start at that club until, I don't know, like 7 or 8 o'clock at night. And so he was off work already anyway, so he took me down. Now, this is the first place that I ever went and the first place that I ever worked. There's many more to follow, but this is the first one. So um, it was called the Cat's Meow. And obviously when I first walked in, I was quickly aware that this was not just regular dancing, right? like very quickly aware and they had a madam and when you uh went in to interview the madam would you know show you all around and usually the dj or the bartender would interview you and i got interviewed i got the job now i didn't have anything to wear um I had brought a bag with me of like, uh, like lingerie and bathing suits and stuff like that, which I thought we would be, I thought that's, you know, the kind of thing you would do. You would wear some kind of sexy clothes and get up there and dance. Um, I didn't know that the sexy clothes came off, but we'll get to that. So, um, there's a big, you know, huge dressing room with all the lights, you know, like you're in Hollywood or something. And so... I was pretty impressed by that. I was like, oh, this is like a cool place to put your makeup on. And um, everybody was pretty nice. And it seemed like, well, for sure I was the only one there. It seemed like there may have been girls in there, uh, the only one there that was that young. It seems like there may have been girls in there that were maybe, um, I don't know, 18 or 19 but for sure nobody was as young as I was. And I was saying that I was um, 20. That's what I was saying. I was saying I was 20 and I'd had all those surgeries, you know, so 
I just told them that I had a C-section and, you know, like blah, blah, blah. And back then people weren't having babies that young. So I guess, you know, I pulled it off. So, um, back in the dressing room, I would see like, you know, like a clothes rack would come in of all these like really neat outfits, you know, with bling and, um, you know, like I dream of genie looking stuff. And I had never seen, I mean, most people, unless you've not, well, you can't even not see Texas is different. And that's why I'm going to, I'm probably going to title this video. Texas topless bars are different than Florida or why they're different than Florida. Um, and here, none of the places that I'd been to as a young adult here came to the level of the places that I worked in Florida. Um, as far as the clientele that came in or what the dancers wore or did on stage. Um, yeah, Texas is much different. So in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale at the cat's meow, um, I had a pillowcase that, in fact, I have cheetah pants on right now, so I'll show you. It was like this kind of a print, the cheetah print. I had this, or he had this cheetah pillowcase. And I, you know, I was much smaller then, so I cut it in a way that it was a cut-off top, and I cut, and I had this little crop top, and then I wore my bathing suit bottoms. And I watched the other dancers for a while, and then, you know, the, you get to pick your music, and I went to the DJ, and I picked my music, um, and it was three songs, or five songs. You did three songs on all the different places I worked at were different, so... Uh, let me get this correct. You did three songs on main stage, then you went to side stage, then you went to the other side stage. So you had five songs, um, which is a long, it's a long set if you dance the way I do. Like, um, you know, a lot of the places that I saw when I came back and I was here in Dallas, the girls just kind of waltz around and they just kind of swing themselves around the pole and they don't exert a lot of energy. I would come off of that stage soaking wet. Like I was, I was performing flash dance every time I was on stage, you know, it was like, uh, I was, I was giving it the old, but that, you know, I'm like that with everything. Like I try so hard at whatever it is that I'm doing. Like it's not, I don't know if it's that much. It might be a little perfectionism, but it's not that much like I've seen people that are perfectionists that like they need to get A's on tests and if they don't, they really just fall apart. I'm not that bad. I mean, I really want to get that A, but I won't lose it if I get a B, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, so I try hard and of course I tried hard and I studied because that's another thing that I'm like a research freak, right? I research everything in depthly possibly for hours. I'll get on a subject and get obsessed about it and I'll just research it out until I know absolutely everything about it. And then I'm on to the next subject. Um, at this time I wasn't that aware that I was that much of a researcher, but that's what I was doing. I would just sit and watch the girls and watch how they moved, watch who got tips and who didn't and you know what they did to get them. And at the same time, an education was provided for you. And this is where it really starts differing from clubs in Dallas. Um, okay. Yeah, this video is going to be too long. So we're going to have to continue this in part two, y'all. So if y'all want to hear about how I got that dance and figured out and met the first pimp, that'll be in the next video. So y'all please like and subscribe and... See me in the next video. Bye, y'all.